Welcome to the school farm and I'm going to give you a little history of how we started and where we are now. So right here I am at the top of the terrace beds and this is where in 2013 a group of high school students from the Bayview School who were relocated over here came and this was all grass and we put in terrace beds. That was the very beginning of the school farm here. Now over at the Bayview School, they had a garden there and it was next to the food bank. And they were growing their food for the food bank and there was one at the middle school and another one at the elementary school. And all these gardens were growing their produce for the food bank because we couldn't deliver it to the cafeteria because of food safety reasons. Now, once we had this garden here, we negotiated protocols with the Chartwells Corporation, which is a food service provider for our lunches and breakfasts. And once we had a successful food safety protocol uh, negotiated with them, we could sell our produce to the cafeteria. And that's when this whole big field up here, we were able to cultivate. So let's move from our first 10 terrace beds up to where we then started to add more beds. Now up here on the flat field, this had once been a soccer field for the old primary school. And as our student enrollment declined, the district had to consolidate. So all the K2 students moved up to the old intermediate school and that became K6 and this was abandoned. So when those students came from the baby school and started the terrace garden up here, this was all just an empty field. It found it barely grew grass. That's how terrible the soil was in that old field. But with compost and soil amendments and cover crops, we revived the field and turned it into a farm. Different areas came on at different times. We have the east beds over here they were the next area to get cultivated. And then we started this section here, which has the bean tunnel right this year, 2021. Um, this, the south beds were cultivated. This is the west section right here. We cultivated that. And then in 2014, that big old hoop house over there, we got a grant and we put that in. So, 2014 was a huge growth year for developing this flat area. The harvest shed right there, the first structure with the red roof, went in 2015. And then let me take you over to the circle beds because they had two uh, successions of when we developed that area and that's a really fun area. So you see the hoop house over there and our pallet compost bins. And then this is the fence line we installed in 2014. And it comes down here. And then it used to go like this. And we had three circle beds. And those circle beds were so much fun, we wanted more. So we thought, well, let's bump the garden out that way. So I think that was like in 2015 or 16, we bumped the garden out and we made more circle beds. And that also gave us enough room to add an orchard. So here in the circle beds, we always have two popcorn circles. This is Dakota black popcorn. So the students are growing their own popcorn. We have sunflower circles and a cucumber circle, a pizza garden circle, all the things that you can grow and put in a pizza, and then we have two bean teepees. And of course, these are always rotating. Uh, it's the fifth and sixth graders that make these circles, so it's a lot of fun. So this is the circle beds, which are a real fun part of the garden for the kids. Let me show you another fun thing that we started to do, which is our indigo patch. About in 2018, we started to work with Cheryl Lawrence, a local fabric artist, and she introduced us to indigo. We've got a fabulous indigo patch out there, and we do natural dyeing, and we have other 
dye plants that we grow. So we added on the dyeing in addition to the vegetables and the fruit. And then I'll show you on the other side of the garden the other bump out that we did. So here we are on the north, what used to be the north fence line. And we had our harvest shed tucked in here and the hoop house and then out, this was a fence with a gate. Uh, we had started some beds here for demonstrating buckwheat cover crop with the second graders and we started a little native hedge around there. And then we realized we would love to have some kind of covered outdoor structure for the students to be under. So we bumped out the fence line in 2019. So the new fence line encircled this big area and then the pandemic hit in 2020 and boy did we change how we were going to do the outdoor classroom. We then wanted to build something big where we could do social distancing and it could be really a year-round structure. So last year we did a big fundraising and we built this marvelous outdoor classroom which has been fantastic. We call it the solar barn because you'll see that this outdoor classroom has solar panels which are wonderful uh, learning for the kids about how the solar panels capture the energy of the sun just like plants. So uh, these solar panels actually provide the energy needs we need to grow, grow, grow all our starts every year. Right here we've got our dye plants. So I mentioned how we're doing the dye plants. So we've got Coreopsis and Cosmos and uh, Dyer's Chamomile. So we have another little uh, dye plant section. And you'll notice all along the fence line, we have a perennial border. We've got native plants, we've got pollinators. Um, a new addition in 2021 is the beehive over there, and we'll take you over there. And then right here is this fantastic rain garden that the second graders made. There's tons of water that comes off this field up here, and it floods everything in the winter. So the second graders made a rain garden to absorb the water, and they learned so many things about watersheds. So this went in this past year, and then we'll take a quick look at the sensory garden. This was a project of one of our AmeriCorps service members this year with the Learning Connection kids, and it's designed to be soft and stroking and smelly. There's some mint over there and also wheelchair accessible. So this is a little tour of how the school farm at the elementary school came to be the size and configuration that it is now. In terms of a design, we kept a big open space in the center because uh, we have big groups here. So we wanted big groups of children. So we wanted to have the children be able to have a gathering area outdoors as well as indoors underneath shelter. So here you have the elementary school garden uh, where the most students come. But we also have here at the elementary school campus our cafe building, which the school district gave us in 2018 for our culinary classes. And we have the cafe garden, which we started with a uh, kidsgardening.org grant in 2016. Over at the high school, there's the front garden, and that started in 2017. And then the back garden had been going for a number of years, but we really revived it and restored it back at the same time as the front garden. So that's where the um, ag program for the high school is, over at the high school. And then this is where the K-6 students come. So this is a really brief history of how the school gardens started and what got added when. Uh, but the thing I want to also mention is how the community supported it. When we started the, the garden over on the terraces in 2013, there was no funding for the school farm. Uh, in 2014, uh, when we did the Chartwells protocols, I saw the potential for the school farm program as a production site and also for all the education 
for the kids with how to grow food, science-based education, good nutrition, all those things. So I volunteered my time that year in 2014, and then a whole bunch of people got together and said, we love this idea, let's fund it. So you're gonna learn about Goosefoot Community Fund, that's a very important nonprofit we have here on the island, and they own the Goose Grocer. And as a nonprofit, uh, they have a wonderful thing they're doing with the profits that are generated from their grocery store. Instead of having those profits go into the pocket of shareholders, the profits go back to the community. And when it took them five years to get the grocery store to making money, and then the school garden program was the first community project that they wanted to donate their money to. So over five years, they donated over $250,000 to fund this program and help it grow, which was incredible. And after five years, that was um, 2014 to 2019, then the school district took over the bulk of the funding. And Goosefoot Community Fund didn't just give us um, profits from their grocery store, they also raised money with the community. So there's tremendous support from the community and from other nonprofits for the school farm. So we really are a community supported program. So here's a little brief organizational history. So we started out with a vision and a inspiration to start a school farm. Initially it was volunteer. Then with community funding from Goosefoot, from Whidbey Island Nourishes, from individual donors from the school district, we were able to have modest uh, coordinator and teaching staff, uh, and we had uh, interns coming. Then it transitioned in 2019 that the school district really took the program on fully and hired uh, the farm educator and school garden manager, and then we launched our AmeriCorps program. So last but not least, let's go visit the honeybee hive, the new one that was just installed this spring, 2021. And uh, it was installed by, as a Girl Scout project, and it's been a marvelous addition, both for the students and for, of course, all of our flowers and our vegetables that are now getting pollinated by the bees. So that completes our short history of the school farm, and it'll be funny It'll be fun to see what part of the history we all write together this coming year. Thanks so much.